Well, we've got a little rain overnight. As you can see, we've got the 9560 in the shop here. Got a couple of skid spinners in here. It's kind of a common theme to have one of these in here, on these orange guys. But we've got a um, solenoid for one of the foot pedals that's giving us problems, but that's not what this video is about. What we're gonna be doing is we're going to be installing an auto steer system into the 9560. Uh, I tried to get my hands on two of these. Uh, they only wanted to give me one for right now. I did have to pay for this. We're gonna get this in there. I told Alex I was gonna put it on her tractor. She did not want auto steer in her tractor. And Sarah says, I want it in mine. So I was putting some parts away this morning, some stuff that had come in in the last couple of days. And I see this box and it said, uh, to Andy from Matt, a viewer. It's in a uh, John Deere box. And uh, somebody dropped me off some bush light and these John Deere uh, cans here. Um, so we're gonna be utilizing these to help with the install. I'm not sure how many it's gonna take, but I've got a pretty good idea. I know how many I'm gonna drink. <laughs> so uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. They're too pretty to open, aren't they? They are too pretty to open. So I think I better stay off the, the bush light and the green cans, but uh, they look they look really delicious. They look more tasting in the green can than they do uh, the blue can. So I'll let you know if we get into them. But let's go ahead and dive into this project here. We'll get everything opened up and we'll kind of give you a brief synopsis if you will on how to do an install of this system here i have installed the john deere systems i'm assuming that this system is somewhat similar and we'll go into the particulars after we get everything um, opened up here so why don't we go ahead and put these little guys back in this box here and if we break in any of these we'll let you know Oh, I gotta be very careful. I've gotta, gotta handle with care. I'm surprised this box doesn't say handle with care on it. So I wanna thank Matt for dropping these off. I have been looking for the bush light and the John Deere cans for quite a while now and I just can't uh, find them. So let's get things opened up and we'll uh, join back up with you here. You got your own knife. Your own knife. You carry your own knife. You sure that's safe? Probably not. <laughs> so, this looks like some wiring and stuff like that, some brackets, so on. And we'll just get everything opened up here. This is the antenna. Looks like the antenna or the, uh, yeah. The antenna stuff that's going to go on top of uh, the cab. What do you got here? We've got basic uh, spacers and whatever for the different steering wheel uh, shafts in this box. And then we must have the main uh, components in that one there. We've got some basic picture instructions here. Uh, we really don't want to get into uh, monkeying around with too many instructions. We, we need mainly pictures. Oh boy. Looks like we've got a uh, booklet here. This is in a sealed bag. Let's not break that seal. <laughs> so, we'll go ahead and digest some of this. We've got the... Uh, steering wheel motor unit here this is going to go on the we're going to have to remove the steering wheel and then set this on there this has got the actual motor in it kind of like a race car wheel you know look at that huh yeah. yeehaw 
Yeehaw! Some of the pictures I've seen, I thought it had looked like that this was a cheap wheel. That seems like a very well put together uh, steering wheel. Here is the uh, display here, which we'll get into that after we get the install done. It already has a ram mount on the back. The John Deere systems that we have put in, um, I have converted them over to a ram mount as well. They're easier to get in and out of a uh, tractor. And then here is the actual mount assembly here that will go ahead and fix this to uh, the corner post. We'll probably have to make up a special bracket for that. I don't like having the display down at like knee height. It's best if you have it like right here blocking your view. It, it doesn't really block the view but you can you can reach it easier and you can act, access it better. So we'll uh, get into this. We'll figure out what's got to go where. You can go ahead pop the uh, steering wheel center off. Actually we probably better show everybody how that's done. The reason why I already know how to do this, the reason why I know how to take these steering wheels off is because we have a similar uh, system, a John Deere system that has the, an ATU. We can kind of show you some pictures of that. And that is similar to uh, this style system here. So we need to get things drug out here and just start in one area and work uh, from there. We'll touch base with you from time to time because this is going to be kind of a long drug out video because we're going to kind of be showing you how to actually do uh, the install. This is not going to be a, a quick, uh, you know, just fast video like I, I normally do, like the corn planter, for example. We didn't show you every step on that because it, it would have been a, a it would be snowing by the time you've seen the rest of the uh, install. So we're going to jump up in there, pull the steering wheel off, get that much done. We can set this on and then we can go from there. All right, so what you're going to want to do to get these John Deere steering wheels off, pop that, uh, uh, well, put the steering wheel down, get your jackknife out, pop that emblem off. Pop it. You gotta pop this guy off right here. How am I gonna do that without stabbing myself? Just get underneath that thing there and just pop it this off. This thing? Yeah. I don't know how to do that. It, oh, ooh, easy. I said I was gonna probably use this. <clears throat> Tighten that. There you go. Just work it. Work it. <laughs> work it. Oh, it's coming. All right. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so we've got the actual cover itself off. This looks like a 13 millimeter nut. We're, we're going to pull that off and then it will get, be able to get down into the gizmo. That there should be a large nut, if I remember right, down inside here. Actually, I can use my. Uh, I can use my adjustable wrench here. want to make sure we get this on the yeah we're on the metric side here all right hold that steering wheel oh baby all right so we've got that off in there we we'll pull this out we want to save all this stuff so that we don't lose it so when it comes time to put this back on there we can do so uh, and it this is hand tight that's not good. You'd be going down the road and the steering wheel will come off in your fenders. Alright, so I get this gland nut off in there. This is like, eh, if I remember right, inch, inch and a sixteenth or inch and an eighth, if I remember right, because I've taken the steering wheel out of the combine before. Now see if you can pull. You should be able to, oops. We might have to get after it a little bit here, so I might have to actually put the camera down. Uh, put steady pressure on it. Put steady pressure. Oh. There you go. Okay, oh. so now we're going to go ahead and 
fine. Uh, there's a sleeve that's going to go on here, and then we can set the actual uh, motor down on there. I don't know how we're going to be able to adjust this steering wheel height. We might not be able to do that. So we have removed the steering wheel. We now have the power wheel that comes with the kit. Actually, I don't need to have it upside down on the bench here. We've got that setting out here. They give you several adapters that are gonna fit various steering shafts and different model tractors. There's uh, three, seven different uh, collars here. This particular one here is the one that fits the steering shaft in this 9560. And I, if I recall, most of the John Deere, most of the new John Deere's or the, the more modern ones are gonna use this same sleeve here. And this, this one is a number four. So we're just gonna set that down in there. We're gonna put six uh, cap screws in, and then we've gotta fix a bracket somewhere on the back side of this motor so that it doesn't do just this in the tractor and then get this installed on the column itself. All right, so we have the old steering wheel removed and we're getting ready to put on the steering wheel that comes with the uh, kit. This has the actual steering uh, motor in it. This tractor does have an integrated steering system, but with this kit, you have to use their steer motor we picked out the right adapter to go on this spline shaft we have that fastened with the six hex bolts that they give you inside this steer unit itself now on these john deere steering columns most of them have a telescopic uh, steering column and how that works is there's almost like an inner type uh, clamp that spreads out inside the uh, steering column itself when you loosen up the center part of the wheel that causes that to either collapse inside itself or open up however that works it allows you to telescope it in and out however we cannot put this uh, unit on there we're going to have to run with a fixed uh, steering wheel height, which if you've got the same operator running the tractor all the time It doesn't really much matter where you have that uh, steering adjustment, but we have modified this to uh, Be able to work We ended up putting an eight millimeter nut on here along with the eight millimeter lock nut We've got them jammed together Therefore we could put a socket on here in order to adjust it. We do have this adjusted at the height that Sarah wants to, to run this. The other problem that we ran into was this nut right here is the nut that held the old wheel on. The inner part of this housing is too small to accept any kind of a socket to tighten that nut in there. So what I did is I took a 7 8 3 8 drive socket, I bored out the um, part that your ratchet would go into or your extension. I bored that out so that it would fit over the actual steering shaft and we're going to be able to nut that on there just like that. And then this fits down inside the, the steer motor. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get this on there. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. We want to get make sure our wheel is clocked right. So we'll get this to set on there, maybe. There. We've got that on there. Now we're going to go ahead and fasten the steering column down with this nut that's welded to this socket. And how this is going to work is it's going to, once it's down on there, you're going to be able to drop in a 13 millimeter socket like this to be able to adjust the stud that's in the actual steering column 
to run the telescoping part of the wheel. In order to tighten this socket up, I've got a 14 millimeter bolt. I've got it double nutted. We can drop that down into the socket and then we can tighten the socket slash nut assembly uh, with that. We've got that in there. I drop my nut in or my bolt assembly and then I can tighten this with a wrench. We don't need to get it overly tight, but we want to make sure that doesn't come off of there. And then that's what this uh, looks like like that. And then again, we have the steering wheel height adjusted the way we want it, but we could drop this socket down in there we can use the socket to loosen this up, get our adjustment, and then tighten it back down. Now, don't over tighten this bolt here. You'll strip this unit out and you'll be fixing stuff. So we have our steering wheel center that's going to go on. The wheel itself clips on there. If I could do it with one hand, I'm not sure. Now, yeah, that's on there. Now, one other thing we could do, which I, I don't want to destroy this system right now. We could actually drill a hole in the steering wheel cover, get a little rubber plug or something, and uh, be able to get a socket down in there or an adapter handle or something to adjust that. Now, we've got the appropriate bracket on the bottom of the steer motor. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow it to be fixed to the actual steering column. We need to tighten the two jam bolts up or the adjuster bolts up. And then now we have the uh, steering unit all set and then uh, the tractor here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get our display mounted next and then we're going to go ahead and put the receivers up on top of the cab. We'll make sure this is tight down here. Actually that could probably be slid in just a little bit further. That one's tight, and that one's tight. Okay, now let's get our display in here. We've got the steering wheel mounted. We've got the display is in the cab. We'll show you that in a minute. We're getting ready to put the receivers up on top of the cab. They give you some brackets to bolt down to uh, the roof. And we'll show you what that's gonna look like here in a minute. They give you an assortment of different tubes here and one telescope's into the other. And then we've got some self-adjusting brackets here that go on this, I think that's like inch and a quarter tube there. And on most tractors, that's probably gonna work. However, on this cab here, being that this cab is, the, the roof is a lot, wider than say like a 7810 you know the 7010 series uh once they went to the 20s and the 30s the top of the cab roofs were a little wider um like an older vintage tractor like maybe a 4450 or something the cab the two cab bolts were a lot closer together and this kit would work so we are about six inches too short. So I ended up cutting the center tube in half and I was able to shove a three quarter rod in there. We're gonna weld that on each end so that to give us some length and then we'll show you what that's gonna look like. Once we get it installed, we've got the, the five eighths or the 16 millimeter bolts that are coming out of the top of the cab. They're gonna bolt in this L bracket here. That's gonna hold the cross tube on on each side 
and then we'll be able to fasten the receivers down and then there's a couple of antennas that stick to a, another bracket. So I've got to get some welding done here. We'll get that up on top of the tractor cab. We'll show you what that looks like and then we can start our wiring process. We've got basically everything just about all installed. We just lack uh, this one bracket here. No big deal. We can handle doing the welding. So we'll get that. You want to weld that? Nah. Nah? Now you got to put everything on. Ah, it's a whole ordeal. Got to do your makeup. Got to got to braid your hair yeah so yeah so we'll uh get that welded all right we've got this bracket lengthened out we just shoved a piece of three quarter inch rod in there looks a little gaudy but you know what no one's gonna see it up on top of that cab we splashed some paint on it. We're gonna go ahead and let that dry a little bit. And we've got one of the receivers mounted on one side here. Like I said, this is gonna go down through the, the hole in the cab roof or the, the bolts that hold the top of the roof on. They're either 5 8 or 16 millimeter. And we'll have one of them on each side and then that tubing that I lengthened is gonna bridge the gap in between here. So. We'll get things fastened up and get it up on top of the cab and we'll show you what that looks like here. Well, I guess we have about as much done as we can get done to it right at the moment. We are currently 15 sixteenths of the way done. Or are we 31, 30 seconds? We have everything installed. The one thing that we do lack is a, what is it, a SIM card? Yeah. So I've got to get a SIM card. I don't know what that's going to turn into. So we'll go ahead and we'll jump up on here. And we'll show you what the bracket looks like that holds the antennas up above. But before we show you that, we ended up bringing our power through. We broke in to a spot where the wire harness comes up out of the brake valve down through the floor. We snuck the wire over under the mat, come over in, down in through here, took a route down through where a wire harness comes up through to the brake pedal and the steering column and whatever, and we dove out through that hole that was already in the floorboard for our power wire, and we came over and we gain or grab some electricity here out of the battery box. So we're gonna go ahead and turn it on in a second. We haven't turned it on yet. So when I, if it goes up in smoke, I wanted everybody to be able to see it. And I need to cut out the glare here. So we're gonna have to come back on this backside and we'll have to jump up on here and show you from the backside, the sun is glaring through the window there so what we had to do is we had to actually lengthen that bracket that goes across between the two cab mounts it was six inches too short and all we did is we just cut that tube you've seen me do that we shoved a three quarter inch uh, piece of rod in there welded it threw some paint on there and uh, bolted the brackets down the brackets that um, are mounted to the top of the cab, where that tube slid into it, I ended up welding it on both sides, just so that nothing moves, uh, so that nothing would move. And then we've got a 4G antenna up on there, and I forget what the other antenna does, but there's an... Uh, orientation that they want them to be in and we've got that mounted uh, just like that uh, we brought the cables over uh, from the, the top of the cab here we come down alongside uh, this corner post dropped uh, in through the back access hole here to the cab dove down into uh, the near the floorboard there come around the uh, operator seat and then we'll show you what things look like inside <clears throat> inside the cab here we just got done somewhat neatly 
tying all these wires together we've got one wire here that's a little short and that's this one here so we, we're going to have to get a a little longer cable so that we can tuck that in out of the way we've got our power switch here so we'll go ahead and turn that on and we'll see if this thing comes to life here so what is the tractor shouldn't have to be on that power switch is uh the power switch is hooked right to the battery did it come to life there it's coming to life so this is the very first time that we have turned this on um i do have to get a sim card for this and we have to go through the different parameters here uh setting the tractor up and everything else like that failed to get registered address so we're gonna have to go and set this uh screen up but before I do that, I, I want to dump a uh, SIM card into it here, and we'll join back up with you once I get uh, get a SIM card in there, and then we can actually go into uh, using this. So are you excited about this? Very. Yeah. Was this as hard or harder than the corn planter? Kind of easy, wasn't it? It was annoying, though. Annoying? Yeah. yeah. So uh, the install went pretty decent. Uh, everything that they said was in the, gonna be in the kit was in there. Although, um, not that I'm disappointed, but uh, they would like to see me selling these kits. And before I get into selling them, I wanna make sure it's something that's gonna work for everybody. And uh, that bar that goes across the top of the cab, they need to put longer tubing in there if it's gonna be something that um the regular person can install here uh some of this uh stuff with welding and whatever not everybody can do that stuff and in order to do an infield install you want to have everything go uh very easy and the reason why that tube is not long enough is just most of the cabs that they have these figured for um are a little narrower so we'll go ahead and uh get a sim card and we'll um join back up with you all right, we are into the next day. We're gonna go ahead and make a guidance track down through this one field here. We're not really set up to plow this field right now. We wanna put a little more manure on that end. We're just gonna make two passes in this field just so that we can kinda of demonstrate how this guidance system works. We've already measured the width of the implement, which is 22 foot, 10 inches. So we're going to go ahead and go over to our display. We're going to go into settings. Uh, what was that? Working width alerts. We're going to go up here to spacing. And we're going to put in 22 foot, uh, 10 inches. I'm going to hit OK. Now we've got the implement width in there and it's going to know where to put our guidance lines and then we can decide whether we want to skip a pass or uh, do whatever why don't you back up so you don't hit my truck we'll start out at the other end of the field okay we've done some test runs here we're going to make a pass down through the field uh, we had some, to get some things set up so that we could get our settings in place and we'll kind of show you how we got up to this point here. Before you get set up, you need to set your implement width. So you're going to go into settings. You're going to go to working width alerts and then spacing. This implement here is roughly 22 foot, 10 inches wide. It's actually a little wider than that. We're probably going to have a little bit of overlap going on, but that's, that's okay. We can adjust that. Uh, after the fact here so we'll come over to here we've already got a guidance line that we've used to get uh, this much of the field done so go ahead we're going to go into our recorded guidance lines i called this one test go over to here it's going to generate the lines the lines are in purple there then you just press start for your steering wheel and then we can record and we'll go uh, from there. So go ahead. 
So the steering has already been activated. Once she starts moving, the steering wheel will correct. She's got to put her lower the implement down. And now it is steering on its own. Looks like we have the width is about right. We're running about a six inch overlap, roughly. What we used here was a straight line. Uh, we tried doing a curved track. We ran down through the field with a curved track. Uh, that didn't quite work well. Uh, we had to change some settings. I came back to one of the straight tracks that I had pre-recorded. We made some passes alongside it to get our settings adjusted. And as you can see, it's doing a pretty good job running parallel to the last pass that we previously made uh, down through the field. We're maintaining that six to eight inch uh, overlap. You can see that number two disc on the right hand side is kind of dropped down in that one furrow there we're almost to the end of the field or the end of our track And once we get to the end of the field, we're going to sign off from this video here. And then we'll have to come back at you in the future here as we get using this system. And we'll kind of rate it on how it performs. But we feel we've got our settings dialed into place. We were overlapped a little bit. Then we were uh, leaving a little bit of a gap. Now we're, we're pretty good with... Uh, with our overlap there. Turns the steering off, turn back around. I'm not picking up that line. Yeah, just take me down to the other end of the field there. So we'll make one more pass here down through the field. She'll get centered back up on her next guidance track. Sets are adjusted about perfectly. We're running number two disc on this left hand side Right in that furrow that the chisel plow shank is left And that's kind of relying on the shanks actually being in the right spot from one Side of the chisel plow to the other side from center. It's not like this is a corn planter or anything and once in a while if you get one of them shanks that break a bolt or whatever you could have a shank that's slightly off either that right hand one or the left hand one could be off a little bit from center but it's dropping that uh, disc right in that second furrow so this is where Sarah's gonna go ahead and kick me out of the tractor here and uh, That'll about do it, I guess. So, we will test this system out. We'll give you an idea how this works in a future video. So that's gonna do it, right, Sarah? Yeah. Are you done testing? You just wanna get working, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Well, folks, that's gonna do it. That'll give you an idea how this system works. We wanna thank you for watching. And we'll catch you at the next video. I got to get back to work here.